What up, what up? Wimbush here, and today I'm excited to show you how to make this. Now this tutorial came about because someone asked me how to bring the tracer object from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're starting in Cinema 4D. I'm still in version R21 right now. And this question came from my YouTube channel. We have Erfan asking about how to bring the tracer into Unreal Engine. And so what he's trying to do is bring the sweep nerves from the tracer out of Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. I figured out a way to do it. You are gonna need X particles, but let's get into it. So I'm gonna start off by making a particle system. So if I come up to simulate, come down to emitter. Now I have emitter here. So if I click play, it's just gonna play out like so. And actually let's make this, we'll do like 250 frames. And for our emitter size, we're gonna make it a little bit larger. So maybe 500 by 500. And then for my scene, I'm actually gonna go 24 frames per second on this one. And then let me make sure I have my, my render settings here set up correctly. So I click this button here, edit render settings. I'm gonna go, we're just gonna go 1080 HD TV, 1080 24. Cool, so we're all set up there. So I'm gonna click back on my emitter here, click on particle. I'm gonna leave my birth rate the same. I'm just gonna leave it at 10. Stop emission, we'll leave it at 120. Lifetime, let's maybe bring this down to 300 with a variation of 50. And then speed, maybe let's try 500 with a variation of 50. Let's click play. So we're getting some cool moves there. Particles are moving at different speeds. So let's add a little bit of rotation in here. So I'm gonna come back up to simulate. Let's come down to forces, and then click on rotation. Let's click play. Now you can see our particles are rotating a little bit here. If I bring my angle speed up to like 30, they're rotating a little bit faster now. Then maybe let's add some turbulence as well. So I'm gonna come back up to simulate, come down to forces. Let's add some turbulence. Bring my strength up to maybe like 15. Click play, see what we have. See what happens if I move my scale all the way up. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty cool there. The main reason for this tutorial is to show how to bring a tracer into X particles. So let's get into that aspect of it now. So if I come up to MoGraph, come down to Tracer, I'm actually gonna delete this. I shouldn't have came in there. Now I wanna put my emitter in there instead. So again, I'm gonna click on Tracer, then click and drag my emitter into here. Now when I click play, we have some lines trailing from where our particles are. All right, and then we can even put some tips at the end of this by making a sphere. Then maybe let's make a radius around like, let's say around two. And then we'll click and drag this under emitter here. And if I click play, you can see we have some spheres at the end of these. Actually, I need to make sure it's showing. So if I click on my emitter, go under particle, click show object. Now we have our spheres at the tip of them. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm gonna put a glow on them. So it looks like the tips are actually glowing as they're move it through our scene. So it looks like we have everything set up the way that we need it. And so now to be able to bring this into Unreal Engine, I'm actually gonna need the XP Skinner from X Particles. I couldn't do this with a sweep nerve for some reason, it wouldn't recognize it when I brought it into Unreal, but I did figure this out here. So if I come up to X Particles, then come down to Generators, and it's actually under XP Spline Mesher. This is the one right here. So if I click on this, you can see down here, we have a box for splines. All I have to do is click and drag my tracer into here. And now you see that it's make geometry out of our tracer. And then for sizing, I could probably go a little bit smaller, like around two. And underneath sizing, we have this graph here where we can actually taper it off at the end. So if I click and drag this down, you can see we have a taper at the end now. Maybe we can make this a little bit smaller there. So let's click play. 
so you can see the tips have a taper on them and then they grow at the end there so that's looking pretty cool for our example here I'm trying to think that we need anything else we probably want to put a material on here so that we can start adding materials instead of unreal so down here in the lower left hand corner let me double click this and i'm gonna just name this one spline material and then in my material i double clicked on it and it brings up my material editor so maybe let's do something a little bit different. Maybe let's add a gradient. I'm gonna click on the gradient tool. So again, I clicked on color under texture, clicked on gradient. And then right here, we have a gradient box. So I'm gonna click on this so I can add some color to it. So instead of black, maybe we have it start from red. And then at the other end, maybe we have it go to blue. Something like that. Let me click and drag this onto my spline, see what it looks like. So we're not really getting the effect that we want. So right here where it says type instead of 2D U, let me go down to 2D V. There we go. Something like that. Let me play this out a little bit more. So now you can see that our material starts as red, goes to purple, and then ends up blue. So something like that looks pretty cool. Give us a little bit of variety in there. Then also I wanna add glowy tips to the end of this. So I'm gonna double click down here again inside my material box here. And I'm gonna name this one glow. I'm gonna double click on that material. And I'm gonna turn off the color and turn off reflectance and decide of luminance. And I'm just gonna leave this at default. If I wanna change this in Unreal, I have the flexibility to do so later. So for right now, I'm just gonna leave this as white. And I'm going to click and drag this onto my sphere. And then one more thing for my material, for my spline material, I'm going to leave a reflectance on here, but I'm going to remove the default. And then I'm going to click on add and do this one for a GGX. I found this reflection always look better in Unreal. And then for my layer right here, I'm just going to make it 1%. I don't want to have it too reflective, just a little bit. And so we should be good there. So I'm going to save this scene real quick. Just hit Control S. Then I'm just going to name this Tracer. Click Save. And then after this, I'm going to save it out for Cineware so that we can bring it into Unreal Engine. So now that that's saved, we're going to go up to File. Come down to Save Project for Cineware. And then I'm going to just name this one Tracer underscore UE4. So I know this is going to Unreal Engine. This is the one I want to use for Unreal. And then this one might take a little bit longer to save out because it's going to actually save out a larger file for us. Okay, so from here, it looks like we have everything saved out. So I'm going to go to my Epic Game Launcher and I'm going to launch the latest version for right now is version 4.25. Let me click launch. Inside my Unreal Project Browser, I'm going to come down to Film, Television, and Live Events. Click Next. Then I'm just going to start off with a blank slate here. Click Next again. And then for, I'm going to leave this folder right here the way it is. But for this project name, I'm going to just name it Tracer. And then I'm going to enable Ray Tracing since I do have a Ray Tracing RTX card. Then I'm going to click Create Project. Now we have Unreal open, but as you can see, I don't have the Datasmith enabled. That's because I just downloaded this new version of Unreal Engine. And so it's real easy to find. If I come up here to settings, come down to plugins, and then for my search bar, I'm just gonna type in C4D up here. So type in C4D. And right here, it says Datasmith C4D importer. So I'm gonna just click enable. On a side note, I did do a tutorial on how to have this permanently enabled whenever we open up Cinema 4D. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can find that in case you don't want to go through this step every time you open up Unreal. But for now, I'm just going to have to click restart now because I have it enabled now. And I still have another step inside of Cinema 4D that we need to handle, but I wanted to get this starting to import into Unreal. And then I'm going to go back to Cinema 4D and show you one of the steps that we're going to have to take to get this to work correctly. So now that Unreal is restarted, I'm just going to click on this. I'm going to start deleting stuff in here. Like I don't need this player start. I don't need atmospheric fog for now. I'm going to turn off the source light. 
I'm gonna turn off. I'm gonna actually delete the sky sphere. I can leave the skylight for now, and I'll leave the reflection capture here. Okay, it looks like I have everything I need here. So now I'm going to oh down here in the bottom right. It always usually says this project file is out of date. Just click update. Should be good to go. So now when I click on Data Smith, then I'm going to find where I have my tracer file. So right here, tracer underscore UE4, click open. And then right here, I'm just going to click OK on the content browser. I mean, the content folder. And then for this, I'm going to click import. All right. So it looks like we have everything imported. And if I double click on my emitter, you can see that we have we have our tracer imported, but it's not animated. And so I'm going to have to come down to animation, come down to sequencer. And let me just click play on this real quick. So you can see nothing's happening. And that's because we have to actually save this out as an Olympic file. And so let me turn this off because we do have our emitter emitting. You can see right there that we have our spheres flying off. So if I click play again on this, you can see that we have our spheres going off into the distance. They're so small, it might've been hard to tell, but once we add our glow, you can really start seeing them. And so it did import our particle system, but it didn't import our tracer. So to get that to come through, we have to go back to Cinema 4D. This next part is going to be really important. I know we're going to be going through some crazy steps to be able to bring these sweeps into Unreal, but this is the only way I was able to figure it out. We're back in Cinema 4D now. I have my sweep here. And so I'm going to click on my timeline just to take it back to zero. And then I'm going to let this play out just for a few frames, maybe to like six or eight. The reason I'm doing this is because for some reason, Unreal Engine has to see some type of geometry that it has to pull in to be able to make this animate out. And so I've tried it before at frame zero and it always says it has some type of air. And so this is the only way I was able to get it to work. So down here on my timeline, I'm gonna hit play. Okay, it came out to about nine. And so all I did was click play real quick and that's just so we have some geometry there. So if I pull back a little bit, you can see that we start to have some of our geometry here. And that should be enough for us to pull into Unreal Engine. So I want to make sure that I have my XP spline measure selected. Then I want to come over to file, come down to export and then export a limbic. Inside of this settings window, I want to make sure that I'm starting on frame one. Then the sequence is going out to 200. These are the settings that I have selected here. I'm going to pull this down so you guys can see it. So I have selection only splines, curves, particles, geometry, and then down here in optional, I have UVs, normals, and polygon selection. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to name this one tracer underscore Alembic and click save. And it looks like this is saving out pretty quickly here. So we have our project here saved as an Alembic. Next step is to jump into Unreal Engine. I'm gonna close this out. I'm back in here in Unreal. And this is from our C4D file that we had before. You can see over here on the right, this is XP spline measure. So I'm just gonna hide that for right now. And then in my content browser, I'm going to click import here and then I'm going to go up to my Olympic file that I had exported from cinema 4d and click open. And then in here, inside of our import options, you want to make sure that this XP spline measure, it has a name here and I'm not sure if I said it before, but let me go back to cinema 4d inside of XP spline measure right here where it says caps. We want to make sure that this is checkmarked. If it's not checkmarked, it's not going to export this out correctly. So make sure you have that checkmarked before you export. And when I did that, that made sure that under track names that it had some type of geometry there for it to work with. Then under Alembic, where it says import type, make sure you come down to geometry cache experimental. We want to have this selected. Then everything else we could leave at default. So our frame start for this is actually going to be frame zero. 
and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and right here under conversion where it says preset instead of Maya since we are coming from cinema 4d I found that when we changed it to Autodesk 3d max it coordinated correctly with the way cinema 4d does what it axes so let me click import let me allow a few minutes for this to import here looks like everything imported now so let me come down here to my content browser where it says tracer alembic i'm just going to click and drag that into our scene and then up here in uh in my side by road outliner let me click on this come down to transform and zero everything out and then next i'm going to have to come into my sequencer to make some type of animation timeline so if I come over to my content browser, look for my animation folder, double click on this, then double click on the clipboard. Now I have my timeline inside of my sequencer. So if I play this out again, we see our particles moving, but we don't see our limbic file moving. And that's because we have to add it to our timeline. So the way to do that is we want to click on track here. And then where it says after the sequencer, we want to find our limbic file, which right here it says tracer limbic. So we click on that. And then I added it to the bottom of our sequencer here. Next, I want to click on the track button here. And then come over to where it says geometry cache. Click this. And now when I click play, you can see our geometry is starting to grow out. I know it's kind of hard to see because I have it here in the darkness, but you can see it playing back now that I have it selected. So let me go back to the beginning. Now you can see it's starting to play out. So if all you wanted to know is how to bring your tracer into Unreal Engine, that's exactly how you want to do it. But if you want to see how to add materials to your tracer, I'll show you how to do that now. So if you look over here inside of our details panel, you can see we have a blank space for our materials here. That's because nothing is connected. Let me come to my tracer underscore UE4 folder and then look for my materials folder. So I totally forgot that the Datasmith plugin doesn't bring in everything from Cinema 4D at this moment. I mean, it's still a beta. And so gradient files is one of those things that won't transfer over. But um, I guess if we really wanted to do a gradient, we could probably do it within Photoshop. Because if we try to do a gradient inside of Unreal, it's really complicated. And I usually have to look it up. So let me just open up Photoshop here. And let's just make a gradient texture real quick we'll just make this a square texture so 1920 by 1920 if i click on my gradient button here let's make like a dark red maybe a darker blue then click my layer here click the lock so it unlocks my layer then i'm gonna hold down shift left click and drag until I get a good gradient in here. So I guess somewhere around there is fine. And I'm gonna hit Control L to bring up my levels. Let's just darken it down a tad bit, maybe. Somewhere around there, maybe. Then I'm just gonna save this out as a JPEG. So I'm gonna just name this gradient. And then make this a JPEG. Click Save. Quality at 12, click OK. Let me jump back in the Unreal. Then I'm gonna go to my Windows Explorer, find where I made that gradient. There we go. Just gonna click and drag that into my folder here. Then I'm gonna right click and make a new material. I'm gonna just name this one gradient as well. Uh, it won't let me name it the same thing. So I'll just name it gradient underscore um, texture. So I have my gradient texture opened up here. I'm just going to click and drag this over here, that JPEG that I made. Bring this to base material. Then just click save. Then I'm going to exit this out. Take that new material that I just made. Click and drag that over here. So I have my Olympic file selected right now. So I'm going to click and drag it into the material slot. Then I'm going to come back and find my animation my sequencer let me let this play out then I'm gonna unselect it we can see we have some cool gradients going 
There we go, something like that. And then I'm gonna take my glow from my other material for the little spheres that are there. Go back to my materials, double click on glow. Then I'm just gonna bring the glow strength up. Maybe let's make these red. So I'm gonna bring the glow strength up, click save. Do we have something like that? Then let's add a camera in here just so we could try to get a good perspective in here. So I'm gonna come over to place actors, click on cinematic. Let's add a cine camera actor. And when you have that in your scene, you see it pops up a box here. So this is from the perspective of that camera. So I'm gonna to need to zero it out inside of my transform. Then my rotation, I believe I wanna do it on, let's do it on a Z. So I'm gonna have to turn this all the way around to like 270. Something like that. So that's looking pretty cool there. So if I click on perspective up here, come down to my cinematic viewport so that I get my timeline down here. Then click back on perspective, click on the camera that I just made, click at the end, and there we go. And now it's playing our sequence all the way through. And if we really wanna make those spheres pop in our scene, there's one more thing that we could do. So if I come over to cinematic, actually not cinematic, visual effects, and then I wanna find post process and volume, bring that into my scene and my transform, I'm gonna zero it out. And then under here under search, I'm gonna type in UNB and that's gonna bring up infinite X-bound. And that means everything that our scene is gonna be affected by this, not just what's inside the box. And then what I wanna do now is find my bloom. There we go. So if I turn method on, leave it on standard. Now turn my intensity all the way up. Let me click play. Now we can see we're getting this cool sphere effect. And we're getting a lot of lens flare in here. So if we wanna control that bokeh, let me come down and look for lens flare. Where are we at? There we go, lens flare right here. Yeah, I could turn on intensity and then turn on bokeh size so that I could actually bring up my bokeh size. So it's giving us like a cool gradient in the middle there. Then maybe I'll turn down my intensity. So now we can actually see our glowing spheres at the tip of our Alembic files here. So hopefully this answered your question and showed you how you could bring Tracer into Unreal Engine. The only way I could figure this out was using an XP spline mesher from XParticles. So hopefully you have XParticles and you was able to follow along with this tutorial. And if this did help you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, give me a big thumbs up, and as always, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.